A light tongue is a fast tongue. So let's do some exercises. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone master classes and product reviews, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button to take 30 seconds off your quarter mile tonguing time. Now, today we're talking about articulation and how to make your tongue faster. And it's one of the very common questions I get is, what exercises should I be doing to make my tonguing faster? But it's actually the wrong question. We don't wanna ask what exercises. It's not nearly as important as how should I be practicing. So let's talk about the day, the mechanics, and some systems to get in place of a fast tongue. And then we're gonna do some exercises and some homework. Yes, homework, have you met me? You're gonna have homework to get you tonguing faster in the long term. Now, first things first, we have to talk about the mechanics of articulation. Where does our tongue touch the reed? I realize this is my thumb, but for today's purposes, I'm gonna be using my thumb on the reed rather than close-ups of my tongue. You'll thank me later. So you can pretend this is your tongue or my tongue, whichever is less weird for you. We're gonna talk about where we tongue the reed in which with part of our tongue. Which part of our tongue? Now my tongue is getting tied. So when we first begin, a lot of people have the wrong idea that we're tonguing the reed with the tip of our tongue, that we're kind of tapping the bottom of the reed with just the very tip of our tongue. And that's actually not what we should be doing. We want to tongue the reed slightly behind the tip. Now, there's no exact point because all of our mouths are differently, but in surveying many, many of my students over the years, most people are comfortable with about a quarter inch to a full inch behind the tip. So if you're tonguing with the very tip and trying to lightly tap the reed, it's not gonna be nearly as easy or as fast as using that area behind the tip. Now, speaking of tips about the tip, we do tongue just the tip of the reed, but not with the tip of our tongue. So the reed surface we want to touch is simply the very sliver of the tip, just the tip of the reed. As a matter of fact, most of the problems I hear with articulation, squeaking, chirping, or general bad sounds of the saxophone happen when we try to tongue, when we, you, try to tongue the reed behind the tip, especially with way too much tongue surface on the reed. That causes all sorts of problems. And if you find you're only squeaking or chirping when you tongue, that's more than likely the culprit. So here's what we wanna do. Behind the tip of our tongue is going to, so very lightly, tippy tap the tip of the reed. Behind the tip of the tongue, about a quarter inch to an inch behind the tip of the tongue, lightly touches just the very tip of the reed. And it doesn't take much to make that happen. Because remember, we're not starting the sound. It's not like a hammer ringing a bell. All we're doing is stopping the vibration of the reed. When we tongue, we're not starting the sound, we're actually stopping, we're keeping the reed from vibrating. And it takes very little pressure on very little area of the reed to make that happen. So exercise number one, we're simply going to practice adding and removing our tongue, starting and stopping the note. Starting the note, stopping the note, by simply adding our tongue to the very tip of the reed but keep the air pressure solid the entire time. Now, avoid trap number one. We don't want to end the note with our airstream. We wanna make sure the airstream, the air pressure is constant the entire time until the very moment we add our tongue to the reed and the air pressure is still back behind the reed. So avoid this. And once you're comfortable with that, let's do it in a quarter note rhythm. Now, I actually have a metronome going in this example. I just have it through my headphones, so you don't hear the metronome, so you can focus on just the very light sound of the tongue being added and removed from the reed. Quarter note, quarter rest. Quarter note, quarter rest. All we're doing is adding and removing the tongue very lightly from the reed with a big column of air and back pressure of air the entire time. Now, we need to talk about the surface area of your tongue. Behind the tip of the tongue is touching the reed, but how much surface area? As little as possible. And the syllables that we think about and that we teach our students can have a big impact on that. Now, most of you have probably been taught the syllable ta, and I was taught that as well. It's not a terrible starting point, but I think there's a more optimal syllable to think about. So for instance, I want you to say the syllable ta-ta-ta-ta-ta, and notice how much of your tongue is touching the roof of your mouth. Now say, 
Ha-da-da-da-da. A ha-da-da-da-da. And see how much of that surface area of your tongue is touching the roof of your mouth when you use a ha-da-da-da-da syllable. You'll probably find it significantly less. Exercise number two, the bounce. We're going to practice just kind of bouncing lightly the tongue off the reed. We're not literally bouncing. It's just kind of an analogy that I find helpful when picturing it in my head using the ha-da-da-da-da syllable. So think ha-da-da-da, as little surface area of the tongue touching as possible. And we're going to do a long stream of eighth notes which with as little gap in the sound as possible, just lightly bouncing the reed off the tongue in a rhythmic fashion. Trap number two, avoid thinking ta, 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 or any of the syllables that have way too much tongue surface touching the reed. We don't want it to sound like this. Now, once you're comfortable with that, we're going to do a faster bouncing motion of an eight and two sixteenths. Ha, da, 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 da. You'll find you can't do this for, for very long at all. If you're going ta, 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 your tongue is going to get very tired and slow down. So think ha, da, 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 and let the air pressure help the tongue bounce off the reed. Now, reverse the rhythm and do two sixteenths and an eighth note. Da 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 da, keeping the air pressure constant again and a big column of air supporting the sound the entire time. Now, when you're comfortable with the mechanics and tonguing correctly, we're going to start to build up some speed in a more musical context using scales. Now, I am a lover of full range scales. I'm dogmatic about it. I make my students do them. But I don't think full range scales is how we want to practice increasing the speed of articulation. And here's why. Like learning to run fast, so I've read, we want to do it in short bursts to build speed. We don't want to get fatigued and start to develop bad habits. So like running, so I've read. We do the same thing with our tongue. We do little short bursts, little sprints of action. Now, if you try to do it over the entire range of the scale, you're going to get very tired. And what happens when you get tired? You start to compensate with the wrong part of the tongue. It's a very fine part of the tongue that makes this motion happen. It'll get tired, and then to compensate, you're going to start to swing your tongue up using way more tongue muscle than you need to and develop bad habits. Short, small bursts will help you avoid getting fatigued. So to start, I like to take little five-note cells. We're going to practice major scales, doing slur to tongue to. I find this is a good way to get started. If you ever study classical music, this articulation pattern is incredibly common. Not so much in jazz, but it's a great way to start bouncing the tongue off the reed and changing notes, which is more difficult than you think when you're doing it with the correct articulation. So little five-note burst, slur to tongue to like this. And when you're comfortable with that, we'll do the rapid fire round, where we tongue all five notes. Little bursts, little five note cells, little pockets, bursts of speed. Again, don't try to do too many notes at once. You're going to get fatigued and develop bad habits. Now, as you start to incorporate some of these into your practice, remember to take notes. What gets measured can get managed. So you should have a practice log of some kind. Notate the tempo that you are doing each day and each week, and slowly see if you can aim for slightly faster tempos. But don't overdo it, because I can't emphasize enough. The point is not to get the five notes out. That's not the goal. The goal is not to tongue five notes. The goal is to develop our articulation. So if you manage to tongue out the five notes at tempo, but you're using the wrong part of your tongue or you're overcompensating with too much pressure, you're missing the point of the exercise. It's about the process. It's about growing, not simply tonguing five notes. So take breaks and be patient. 
So hit me up with questions below. I'll be back next week with a video specifically on jazz articulation and speeding your bebop tongue up. So until then, go outside and enjoy some of this beautiful fall weather we're having. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go practice.